Hi everyone and thanks for joining again. Episode 2 just came out but I wanted to pick up a few things to talk about about the things that Sam spoke about. So today Sam spoke about I'm not, I'm not even sure which camera I'm looking at <laughs> but anyway this is supposed to be fun so I'm just going to make it I'm just going to try and make it look as where, where I can and hope that you find this good. So today Sam spoke about the help to buy scheme that a government runs and you'd have to do research just to look at it so he spoke about um, the help to buy scheme in the sense that you put five percent of the value of the property down and then the government gives you 20 percent of the value of the property which then makes your total deposit 25 percent with that 25 percent you then take a mortgage on the 75 percent of the property so if the property is let's say two hundred thousand, you put down five percent which is ten thousand and the government puts down um twenty percent which is twenty thousand which makes sorry twenty percent which is forty thousand which then makes your total deposit twenty five percent which basically fifty thousand of the twenty of the two hundred thousand what you've realized in the uk if you've been in the house buying process for some time is that with 25% deposit, you usually get very good interest rates. So if you have a 5% deposit, your interest rate is quite high. If you have a 10% deposit, it's quite high. So as you staircase up every 5% or every 10%, the interest rates gets better as you move up the as you move up the mortgage interest rate. I call it the mortgage interest rate steps. That's how it goes. So if you put a 25% deposit, you actually make, you actually get good interest rate. For the first five years of your mortgage, if you are on the help to buy scheme, you don't pay any interest or any admin fees on the government amounts that they give to you. You don't pay anything on it. After the five years, you pay an interest amount and also an admin fee on it. And then they will start charging you until you pay that thing off. So there are a few options that you can use. Some people start paying it off right after they buy their house when they've done their budget and they've lived in the house for a while and they know how much expenses they're incurring. They then start paying off a little bit of that every month. Other people also save big amounts of money. So let's say you get a salary increase. Let's say that you get a bonus. Let's say you get a monetary gift, whatever it is. People save that up and then they use that to pay off the government loan before the fifth year is up or later it's up to you other people as well like what kobe did was he remortgaged his property took some of his equity out and paid off the government so that now he owns a property and the bank has a stake in the property until he pays off the loan other people wait until the five year is up sell the property whatever profit you make off it the government takes 20 percent of it and then and then you take the rest of it so basically you bought the house for two hundred thousand in five years time let's let's assume that the house value has risen to it's just it's a big assumption but it's just to make the maths easier let's assume the property has risen to let's say two hundred and twenty thousand in five years time it's a weird number i don't know what happens in the uk but it's an example two hundred and twenty thousand in the uk for example the government takes 20% of your 20,000, that's the 20,000 is your 220,000, which the house is valued at now, minus the original amount at which you bought the property, which is 200,000. So it's 220 minus 200,000, which is 20,000. The, the government takes 20% of that. And you can do the calculation. 20% of 20,000 is 4,000. So the government takes 4,000 pounds of the profit you've made in the profit and I'm using in quotes of the equity you have in the property that you when you sold it the profit you made and then you can keep the 16,000 so if you were planning to buy a prop another property it means that you've got 16,000 from the sale of the property minus the government's 20 percent and then you've got your original deposit amounts which you put in at the time which was five percent of the 20,000 which was the 10,000 so you've got 26,000 to then move into a different property but as usual whatever property you move into may have solicitor fees survey fees um again your deposit fees some mortgages have mortgage fees valuation fees so all these costs are extra to the thing that you buy so this is a help to buy scheme there are admin charges and things like that please i think it changed a bit last year or earlier this year and it's different for the different regions of the uk so it'll be good for you to do some research before you do it I hope you find this useful for the help to buy scheme. I'll try and interview as many people and to do snippets like this so that you guys will find it useful. Thanks for joining me today. See you next week when we interview our next, our next 
couple or single person you never know it may be a surprise or you, i might just interview myself but thank you for joining and see you next week bye